Oh my God! It's the E Square Podcast. I'm Easy Mo, and we are back with my boy Pat here live. We're hot. We're hot. We're rolling. How you feeling, bro? Good. Feel good. Thank you very much for pouring up. This is a privilege and an honor because you are very highly regarded out here, not just in the city, but you know, in the in the entire industry. So to sit down and have you here, man, it's awesome. It's great. Thanks. I appreciate it. You know, like I said. Uh, we were talking earlier about mm-hmm. when I was in Nashville and everything, it was much more like closed circle. Yeah. And even though I felt like I was doing some cool work and everything, it was like, you know, they just weren't interested in mm. letting new people in. So Why do you think that was out there? Is it just that's like just, it's seen there, like from what people have told me, that's just kind of how it is there. Mm-hmm. Like maybe it's a older music city, mm-hmm. um, so there's a lot more uh, reverence around music there and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but ever since I came out here, it didn't take very long for me to get introduced to new people and people seem to, you know, just, I guess I'm a more West Coast person all yeah. along, just like my overall values and everything match up with people out here a little bit more, but mm. yeah, since I came out here, it's been it's been a lot better than Nashville. Where are you from originally? Um, well, my whole family is from the South. Um, oh, but, does this, does this, um, uh, does this um, describe the entire, the drip? Oh, uh, Southern, looking very dapper, Southern gentleman. <laughs> I, I really, you know, I wear a tie a lot. It's, it's kind of an homage to the old engineers like Alshman and everything. Right. And just kind of like, you know, the seriousness I take with it and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and That's beautiful. That's yeah. dope. It's fun. The old, uh, you know, the old universal engineers and everything, Bill Putnam and those guys, mm-hmm. um, create a lot of the gear we use today. So. Right, right. It's so a little bit of an homage to those guys. So you've been doing music for how long now? Um, I've been doing music since, I guess I was about a sophomore and junior in high school. Oh, really? So I didn't, uh, I didn't grow up as a music kid. I was mm. a sports kid. My sister was a concert violinist, mm. so she was kind of like the music kid. I was kind of the sports kid. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I enjoyed music, and there were some records that caught me, but I didn't, I didn't pick up an instrument or do anything so until I started a band when, when I was in high school. Right? Oh, shit. And so I did all that and played in bands and I was in college and, and played a lot of music and stuff. And then uh, eventually, uh, I went to school in Minnesota, so I eventually kind of started mm-hmm. a little studio there okay. and started recording artists. And Minneapolis or? Yeah. Okay. And then I, uh, I moved to Nashville from there mm-hmm. to wow. keep recording artists. So why why Nashville? Was there something about like country music? Or? I have uh, I have a lot of family in, in uh, Tennessee, oh, so wow. I kind of had that like um, support there. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of people move there, and I kind of feel like I have part of that. Um, was it's not moving to New York or L.A. Right. It's a little bit easier financially and with jobs and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was engaged at the time, so I, uh, I had other things I was thinking about, too. Mm-hmm. So Nashville seemed like the good, the good move, even though it kind of, like, wasn't. Yeah. So they weren't very accepting? No. I mean, I filmed around music there. Oh, um, What's the scene like out there? Well, actually, actually, it's, it's cool. Yeah, is it? Is it's it awesome um, out there. Like, honestly, um, I like so many artists from all kinds of genres of music. There, what? There's a there's a lot of country, but not like a crazy amount. Um, mm-hmm. Not like you. Not like it's pictured. Really? It's just like here, you know. Mm-hmm. Vegas is the strip. It's like yeah, there's obviously yeah. a lot more going on. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing as like they kind of build this country, and you might have country singer songwriters and that sort of thing. Um, in the airport or whatnot, but um, yeah. they have an awesome like alternative scene, rap scene. Yeah. There's a lot of really great producers. That's why, uh, you know, I got into recording rappers and everything out there, and then um, we got into beat battles and everything mm-hmm. out there. That's why I, like, I met all kinds of great producers, and those guys have gone on to do incredible things. Mm-hmm. A bunch of those guys. Chino Dollars, he's in Nashville still. Ducko McFly, mm-hmm. he's in... Uh, ATL, there's a bunch of those guys, band play. Yeah. He was a young golf engineer and mm-hmm. a key Glock guy. Mm-hmm. So it's like all those guys, I've known my good friends since Nashville. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? And so those guys will all just keep, keep making awesome music. And yeah. What drew you to rap music? Why do you want to, why do you want to record, get so involved in the rap? Rap music, just like, I, I'm really, I'm really fond of like, um, you know, or, or, like I'm really fond of like, punk music and music that's real rebellious mm. and that sort of thing. And rap is kind of like the new punk in some ways. A lot of ways. Um, 
you know, you know, the rebellion factor, you know, I always have been saying this lately, is like the most punk artist lately is Lil Nas X. Oh, like he just sure. absolutely does everything that, yeah. that pisses everybody off. <laughs> and he knows it. And he he just, trolls, yeah. And he keeps like, he knows yeah. he's got to turn the knife all the time. Yeah, just sure. me. Um, Why do you think people get so pissed off at shit like this? Like, I don't understand. Cause it doesn't make me mad. Like, Boosie. Yeah, well, it's just, you know, it's different things, and, you know, guys have explained to me, or some of my rappers have explained to me different things, like, in their community that mm. I've never understood. Mm. They're like, a dude to me the other, the other day was like, oh, yeah, he called me a bitch, and, like, that just, it was, it was on, man. Mm. And I was like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, you know, me and my, buddy's me and my buddies, it. like, whatever, whatever, bitch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, hey, bitch, whatever. Yeah. Like, there's nothing, you know. But, you know, to him, that's really serious, and that's just something that's mm-hmm. different with him and his guys. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, there's all kinds of different like, cliques got different things going on, and there's, yeah. you know, everything like that. So I'm not, I'm not... You know, sometimes you just don't know that kind of stuff, and you know, yeah. you gotta adjust or whatever. But, um, but that little Nas X shit really pisses people well, off. Piss- well, you know, he just knows what like you know people don't like. It's like if you go through anything, it's kind of like what um, you know a number of the trolls do. Right? Right, right. You kind of just pick pick out. That's what they do in election cycles. You pick mm-hmm. out what's angering everybody, and okay, let's. That's like, you know, mm-hmm. pick out it and dissect it. And yeah. Yeah, we were talking about, we were talking a little bit earlier about, like, the music that we kind of grew up on. You know, like the Rage Against the Machines, the Smashing Pumpkins. Yep. Who did you really, who really, like, did, was there a band that really made you fall in love with music as far as being, wanting to be involved in? Okay, so, like, I always tell people love this. Uh, the first song that ever just, like, rocked my world was... This is how we do it, by Montel Joy. <laughs> <laughs> like when I heard that song when it came out, you were just dancing in the music. You know, so I, I don't know what year that song came out somewhere in the nineties, but I I was like whatever nine, you know, eight, nine, or ten or something. And when I first heard that song, it was just shocking to me how good it was. I just didn't even. Understand. It is. It is. And it then is. there was a number of songs around that era. Uh, Buster Rhymes, Woo Ha. Mm. That's you all in check. Mm. There's a bunch of those songs when I listen to them. There's something like really weirdly unique about. Um, it just captures, you know, it, it, yeah. it's just very, very, the way they make music then, the, the, the process was really uh, different, so it wasn't, like, you, you know, you were inherently going to come up with incredibly unique stuff, yeah. and that's what I like, like, we, you know, a lot of people talk about, um, you know, the way in which rap music is made today, and there's producers that are making stuff. There's a lot of guys getting stuff off the internet. Mm-hmm. A lot of guys beats passing around with multiple producers and everything, and multiple yeah. uh, artists as well. Mm-hmm. But that's why a lot of the music ends up sounding the same, is that you're not starting from different places. Mm-hmm. You're not changing the process of mm-hmm. um, people. People give less credit to the process than they should. You know, yeah. you can record a song a number of different ways, and each way you do it it's going to give you a different result. And right. sometimes that might be more original or less original. Right. And, you know, not it's saying it'll be huh? better or worse, but sometimes, like, it's the tougher route to just be more original mm-hmm. and keep mining for the great stuff. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, it's, that, like we were talking about before, I feel like people are too worried about, like, what's hot. I feel like now it's like so much of it sounds the same. Does that frustrate you working with all these artists? Well, you know, when I was young, I, I liked other artists and I was trying to copy them in some right. ways like that's how you kind of like learn how to make what you like mm-hmm. when you don't know music theory mm-hmm. or whatever when you're a young guy or whatever um, but yeah it's like when you don't when you when you have all of it done for you right when you're not when you don't have a hand in any of it you know even if it sounds worse mm-hmm. a lot of times that's going to sound more original Right. If you have the rapper pick out the snare, he's not going to pick out the the same snare, probably. Yeah. He's just not even going to know how. With all those options, you give him 12 yeah. options, and you and you put the one that you always put in there, right. he's probably not going to pick that one. Yeah. He's probably picking another one. Let him. Right. You know, that's all I've always thought was cool about, you know, when producers come with the artist and they'll cook up. It's like, a lot of times, I'll, I'll be cool about that with studio time. I'll give it to, oh, you showed up with the producer? Cool. 
I'll give you a half hour to just cook up, yeah. you know, in front of each other and, like, just create something brand new here. Yeah, that's um, important. It's like uh, from the scratch. Cause yeah, that's not going anywhere else. That's mm-hmm. not, you know, going to get uploaded on the Internet. Yeah. It's just for right here, right now. That's, that's how we always do it. Yeah. Just got together with my friends. We all played different instruments, and we mm-hmm. that's got in the room and made music until it was cool. That's where the magic, the, the, the magic like, takes, comes to fruition. And... Yeah, and it does allow you, you know, it, it gives you the opportunity to be a part of something yeah. and be a part of the group. And, you know, I can't imagine being a producer these days and not being a part of the group. They don't treat you like you or anything when you're running around chasing dudes around for 100 bucks. Right. <laughs> um, Bro, I don't, I, like, being around so many artists, and it's crazy the importance, the lack of importance that they put on the producers and their their videographers. They artists are will fucking like cut the 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 videographers and the producers so short and treat them like such shit. And it's amazing to me because these are the people that like are your fucking backbone of your career. You know what I mean, do you see the same thing with these artists? Yeah, yeah. Well, why, some, some, that, some of them really. Some of them. It takes time to get over some of that. You know. Yeah. I think that. Um, yeah, in this kind of digital age, and guys are doing that. Guys are like, see, watch this. Let's just, here, look up the speed online, and cool, just rip it off there, and then, cool, we'll record on it, and boom, see, that was easy, and and you might even like the song, and that's cool, but that's not really, you know, going to work if any of this does anything. Right. Um, you know, the producer's going to be unhappy. Is he going to want to give you more beats to sound like that? No. Right, right, right. You already told we're trying to steal from him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, what's the biggest issue that you come... Because, I mean, making a song is collaborative. So so you have, you have the artist, the producer, and the engineer. Sometimes people do multiple, wear multiple hats. Is this like a, an issue? That's like the, the teamwork aspect of making music? Has this been done like some stressful? Or has it always been stressful to make a good song? People to come I think it's them. always gonna. I think it's always been a little bit tough, or mm-hmm. you know, and that's one of the things I'm always working on is just making that better and making the whole thing easier for everybody. Mm-hmm. And when an idea comes around, how to bring that to light without seeming like, oh, I got a better idea than you. Mm-hmm. Um, there's yeah, a lot of yeah, there's a lot of egos and emotions and stuff flying around, and mm-hmm. um, but you know. I try and teach, and with my guys, we try and work on, hey, we're, you know, we're just trying to make the best song. Yeah. Um, you know, some guys, sometimes guys bring other people, and those people got opinions. And oh, my God, guys. that's got to be um, annoying as fuck. Yeah, you know? some, sometimes it really is. I, I have no problem telling anyone, like, hey, like, you know, be quiet, <laughs> leave. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, your opinion isn't valued yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, sometimes those people are valuable. Sometimes we you know, know, have to bring his best friend mm-hmm. or something, and that guy will have really valuable feedback. Yeah. Because I'm deep in it, and I can't always, you know, have the best, you know, when I'm trying to do six other things, I can't always think of that's the best lyric to put there. Yeah. Or whatever. And, you know, for the most part, I let guys really get their thing out. I, you know, people sometimes will ask for lyrics or whatever, or people... Um, you know, that's one thing, you know, friends will show up and they'll start volunteering lyrics and mm-hmm. it's like sometimes people don't want that. Some right. artists don't ever want that ever. Right. They want to write every single word themselves. Right, right. Um, and they don't want ever to be a song that they didn't personally write at all. It, it, um, um, does that happen a lot on the, uh, um, does that happen more or less like, because you've worked with local artists, you work with, I would say, what, mid-tier Artists, maybe I don't know if that's the right term. And then you worked with A-list artists. So who who writes more of their music? Like coming up, I'm assuming. Well, I, I would say like, you know, it, it's just different everywhere. Right. Okay. Um, I wouldn't say because I, I would say a lot of the young guys they will help each. They'll go in. You know, I said my 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 youngest group of guys. I, I'll shout them out: Javon Macklin, Pepe mm. Benzo, mm. Uh, Flacco, and all those guys around them too. Who aren't like 19, yeah. um, but like or like I'm not July is one of those younger guys as well, but like Lean and Low, mm-hmm. Grease Blanco, BB Maserati, all those guys mm-hmm. included. Um, 
they they all just go sit in the booth like together. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. And then like, oh, if there's one that's just right there, oh, boom, mm -hmm. cool, take it, cool, take. It. And then we're all just bouncing ideas, and mm -hmm. I might even say something stupid. Yeah. And that'll it'll spit them off in a direction. But right. you know, for the most part, I feel like I want rapper. I want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. I don't want to hear what I think right. you should say. Yeah. How is it working with these artists, these up and coming artists here in the city? Cause you've been that. You how long have you been in Vegas awesome. now? Nine I've years. Been here, yeah, I've been in here. I think eleven. Yeah. I think eleven. Years yeah. Here. So, um, right, right. your diagnosis. Uh, being, I, uh, I love the Vegas artists. It's like we don't have a lot of good promo help here. It's not like a big Vegas area, and there's not like hella financiers right. here in that. The and it takes a lot of, of money to break an artist. Yeah. yeah. A lot. Um and you know, even just to spend your money smartly and to even be able to put your money back into promo and not be getting something tangible with it. Mm -hmm. I know it's hard for a young person. If I was young and popping and good looking and could sing good. You are young and popping and good looking. <laughs> Not like, these kids. <laughs> not like these kids, no, no. And not like these kids. And I, I tell you, like, they, uh, I can't imagine what it would be like, you know, out, in, out here in Vegas and, mm -hmm. and all this is going on. So, we got to um, hit the road, man. Those uh, guys, um, no, the, everybody, all those guys are terrific. We're figuring out different ways of promo. We're trying to be, I'm trying to help guys out. So, you're more, more hands on than, than just the music side of things. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll help any of my guys try and, you know, get the, get the, the project put out mm -hmm. and I will you know I would rather sit there and with whatever distribution distro kit or whatever and upload that with you mm -hmm. so that it's done correctly right, right. there's all kinds of little boxes that you can check and get it's, fucked, yeah. and it's going to get screwed up yeah. or not check and now your YouTube videos aren't being monetized or whatever Yeah. and there's a lot of guys that have been doing that you know they got pop videos they got Thousands of years and they're not being monetized. Right. And so it's like when I see that, I just, you know, I'm going to let them know and try yeah. and help them out with that sort of stuff. I, you know, I want my guys to succeed. That's the whole point. Yeah. With the local talent, too, it's like you build the local talent and, like, that shit could be going crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look on a label, it's like a lot of, a lot of people don't know as many artists that are on a label. There's a lot of artists that are signed to a label mm -hmm. and then a number of artists that, at the top that are making a lot of money and like kind of floating all of the chance artists. Right. Or whatever. Right. You know. There's a lot of artists um, that aren't that are signed to a label and then they don't even they're not even allowed to say they're signed to a label. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's what um they're like because they're trying to paint the independent. Oh sure. Picture. Yeah, they have like a big distribution deal or whatever. I mean, yeah. That's got to be the case with, with some of these guys. Yeah. But, um, but certainly, everybody wants to be an artist these days. Everybody has the quick availability of the web to be able to get something popping. So mm -hmm. there's certainly, in 20 years now, just an ocean of music where there used to be just a pond. Yeah. Um, and It's frustrating for me as a listener. you feel the same way? Um, I feel like some stuff passes me by, but I yeah. feel like the um, sources I go to to check that stuff and my friends keep me pretty well informed. How do you find new music? Um, my artists tell me about new music all the time. Same, a word of mouth. And then, um, and then, yeah, there may be a couple of uh, online sources. Yeah. Um, for some of the stuff that's, there's not a big scene here in the city. Yeah. Maybe like the, uh the like techno music that I like mm -hmm. or like uh, the kind of uh, alternative music I like mm -hmm. a lot of that like more on the east coast yeah that I'm into so I'm sorry yeah so talking about here in the city that you're like very synonymous with Yada how did that relationship come, come about uh, when I came out here I was working at a studio and I was I got a job working uh, on a uh, solo project for DJ Paul from 36 Mafia oh good, good. and so he was I was working with him a lot and then Yada was coming in, um, he was early on, he was coming in and getting in sessions, mm. like not every day, but as much as he could. Mm. And um, he had just gotten, he had either just gotten out of jail a few years before that, or he had gotten his movement popping a little bit and gotten a couple of features and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, we got working on it, it's been great. When I left that studio, I thought he was going to stay with the studio. And I thought, oh my, I swear. And when I left, he was like, oh, cool. Like, I'll just come over to the house or mm. what studio are we going to? Oh, yeah, it's been locked in so, ever since, huh? So it was really cool. Yeah. And, uh, 
Yeah, yeah, he's accomplished a lot. Sydney Yeldon's you know, like, incredible. Um, yeah. Yeldon's one of those. He's always wanted to keep a huge piece of his pie, mm-hmm. so it's like he he's never wanted to sign a deal because he doesn't need the rapper starter kit. Yeah, you know he already has everything rappers want, yeah. and so he's not. He wants to keep all of his masters and you know everything like that. So mm-hmm. he's passed up some bigger promo, you know, things where you have to really give up some points and. Yeah. And I've really, you know, got a lot of integrity because mm-hmm. there's a, or, you know, almost everyone I know wouldn't have done that. Yeah. Um, Do you think that's the right move, though? Because I, I don't know. Yeah. When, when it comes down to it, I know a whole bunch. Now, I know a whole bunch of artists that have been on a label, and I know how good and bad that can be just depending on a million different things. Exactly. Um, exactly. And it typically, if you can find a label where someone works there and they're just, they just love you, they mm-hmm. love all your music, and they're really about your movement and they're going to push for you, mm-hmm. that's what you need. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, where, that got, that's got to be like one in a million, though. And you know? Yeah, I'll just know a number of those people, but a lot of times those people then will, boom, be moving labels. Yeah. The way the record labels have been in the last 20 years. And or jumping on there was and, and, um, Me Too stuff happened, and there was people moving around everywhere. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's you know, that's happened since the 80s, really, yeah. where, you know, you get signed, that person leaves, and then you're so like, really fucked. Yeah, it's like a, so, it's like a football yeah. player, starting quarterback, three years, senior year, new coach, branches him. Yeah, so and so, player. like, um, and so you can say, like, okay, well, that would have been a big deal. But instead, he's made, like, like I said, over a thousand songs with me mm-hmm. and um, all kinds of unreleased material and that he's just sitting on. Yeah. And he's just doing everything he can as as correctly as he can. Yeah, how has it been? For, how has it been for you? That, you know, we're talking about like people moving around labels and shit, and doing all that. So it's really politics. It's a lot of politics. Yeah. How how has it been for you? Because you've reached top of the food chain in hip hop. How uh, the politics like? It's weird because you have you have just people coming in that are financiers or whatever, and they might have things to say. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're kind of like, okay, well, where have you been? Or, mm-hmm. like, you know, what, do you have good ideas? What have you done that, that's of real value that I can say that, you know, that I value that opinion? Mm-hmm. But I try and just think that, like, everybody has a cool opinion. Like, anywhere, you know, the camera guys might see something that we don't see. Right. And um, so I'm really open to all those sort of things, and I'm that kind of person. Um, some people just wonder exactly what they you know, exactly how they want. How they want. It's usually, the guys with, the, with all the money, <laughs> the control, right? Yeah, a lot. There are a lot of guys I've met. You know, with the money, they they're trying to make the world bend to their will with mm-hmm. the money. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just kind of can't make the world do what you want, no matter right. how much money you got. Right, right. You can kind of control those things, but you still gotta kind of just can't really buy into them. Like that. Move through life like that. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, so talking about, like, the top of the food chain in hip-hop, the Kanye experience. So you yeah. were, um, you were, you, you got the call for, to work on Donda, the first one. Yeah. Did you so, have a prior relationship with, with uh, Kanye? Or no, not at all. Mm. Um, big Kanye fan forever. You know, I really just, uh, I, I think that, uh, I've always just really liked the records, and I'm at an age where, like, I've I've really been around for all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I never ever thought I'd I'd have the opportunity to work on one or anything like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there's always these monster engineers working on that stuff, Manny Marikine and uh, Mike Dean and all these guys, and so I never thought I'd have the opportunity to. This time around, you know, it just so happened, and. Dawson was in there working mm-hmm. in Atlanta uh, and everything, and at some point, yeah, I got a call. Dawson had been texting me a little bit and everything, but I got a call from my friend Big Lou, mm-hmm. and he was like, hey, you know, you got to go over there. Yeah. And it's not, and uh, so, yeah, I went over there and went over there and worked the project or whatever, and uh, yeah, we got that one knocked out. It was I was there just for like the last probably three weeks. Mm. Um and uh, How was was, it? it was an amazing experience. Uh, you know, Kanye. The one thing I can I can really say, uh, you know, people 
talk about how amazing of a producer and, you know, musician and everything he is. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, what did you Yeah, he's an incredible musician and incredible producer and everything, the fashion aspect, he's out of control. You know, he oh, might yeah, be yeah. even better at fashion than he is music. Wow. You know, he's really, and really you got to see that first all of that. So, yeah, yeah, it was cool to just be around all that. And, um, yeah, I can't talk much about, like, his process, or I don't really talk about the process of um, my artists and how they work in case they don't, you know, in case they aren't cool with that. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, incredible experience, and, and you shout out Mike Dean and all those guys. Mike Dean, yeah. Was, um, around and got to got to hang out and text him a little bit and be talking to him. On, yeah, got to talk to him on his birthday and everything too. You, so you, cool. you seem like a pretty level guy. Do you ever get like if you're in the studio with Kanye, you're recording Kanye, whatever the case is, um, are you ever like OD excited? Or are you ever like OG, like let down, like get the fuck out of here? I'm trying to match like more of what's happening. Mm. Um, certainly, when people come in, that's one of the quick things that me and my guys are on. Or like, is what was what's going on with this person right now? Right. Um, I have a lot of guys. I, I, for one reason or another, I have a lot of guys that work on or they bring me sad songs that are sad and angry. Mm. Um, I just typically work on a lot of songs <laughs> that are sad and angry. So, you know, I have guys coming in a lot of times, and they are sad, they're feeling down, they lost somebody, mm. broke up with somebody, whatever, and, um, and you know, we're dealing with that sort of stuff. So um, I'm not going to be... Not matching the mood. I'm mm. try, trying to match the mood. So if it's up, I'll, I'll be up and we're having fun. And I want it to be a positive experience. Everybody wants to have fun. Yeah. And that's a big reason. Like a lot of guys can um, engineer great. Yeah. But are you fun to hang out with? <laughs> For eight, seven to 12 yeah. hours or whatever at a time. Yeah. Um, so that's a, that's a huge thing. Mm. It's like if you're not fun to hang out with, you're just not going to get booked very much. Right. You're like a therapist. Yeah, uh, in a lot of ways. Yeah, um, bartenders yeah. Talk, talk with me about that a lot. About how you know sometimes with with artists, like you're really just catering to what like, helping them through the woods a little bit. You know, right, 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 right. Did we find the remote? You don't know where it is? It's just good. Cool. No, there's some cool like fireworks like on there. Or yeah, it's so, it's cool, cool fireworks. <laughs> I feel like sparks are flying. <laughs> huh? Okay. All I see is fireworks. Come on, Pat. All I see is fireworks. <laughs> Hold on, we got to get this. Can you get this on the camera? Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you're now tuning into the E Squared podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Toxic's in the building. What up, Tox? How you know Tox? Yeah, I'm at Toxic. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, where? Oh, the. Oh, yeah, yeah okay, at the show. Okay, okay, okay yeah, yeah. Yeah, how was that show? It was great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was, it was cool. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, you know, it's like um, first Friday, it was lit. Like, mm-hmm. you know, everybody was in a good mood. It was cool. Thank Every, you, Anton. Everybody performed really good. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, who is your favorite uh, unbiased opinion? Who is your favorite artist that you, you know, out of, out of the city that you think? No, you, is that, that's a dangerous question. That's a dangerous question. <laughs> No, I really like yeah. Yada. Yeah. You know, I'm biased, though. That's why I said I'm biased. Like, uh, or, like, you know, uh, all my guys, really, are like, yeah. I don't work with people that I don't love. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's... You're picking children. That, that's yeah. a cheat code to engineering, too. It's like, if you don't... If you keep... If you work on stuff you love, eh, you're right. You know, you're mm-hmm. going to work harder on it. It's going to be better. Mm-hmm. You're going to be happier. All that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, I try these days, especially, to... You know, I might get booked with something that's whatever, not my cup of tea or something for mm-hmm. a little bit. But my long-term guys are all my guys that have done, whatever, 50, 75 songs with me. Those guys are all awesome to me. Yeah. Um, I'm super into that stuff. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and that's why, you know, it's not just a – there's a whole lot of engineers that are just, you know, press three, pull it down, and yeah, like, cool, yeah. it's, it's yeah. 40 bucks an hour. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, right. Cool, like, what, is it, are we done with that? Yeah, you've and had to, to be in those, those sessions, though. And to, 
Yeah, or like, yeah, I want sessions to be over sometimes, sure. <laughs> like, uh, everyone does. Right, right, right. I mean, the artists do sometimes. Yeah, you know, when yeah. we can't get something done, right. and it's just like, oh, like, we've done this a million times or whatever, like, yeah. we just can't, it's not working today. Sometimes, you know, they'll close it up early. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, more or less it's like, okay, we've got four hours. Like, we got to make the coolest shit we can in mm-hmm. four hours. Isn't that the and worst? That's a race. Isn't that the worst part of recording is the structure of, like, hourly? Where there's no, where there, you, are, you are on a timeline. Do you think that's better or do you I think don't that do, contributes to I, the creative I only, do, I only do that with my, like, with my artists that just come in and record vocals like that. And mm. Because, and the reason I do that, I'm totally up front and is because a lot of those artists just take those records and release them. Mm. They're not going to come back and okay it with me, pay me to mix it, mm. come back and even do more takes of something. Mm. They're just, like, going to be okay with, like, the C-level product of it and want to release it. But, and, you know, I know what it takes, and I've seen what it takes to get a record all the way pushed to the top mm-hmm. of, like, whatever shit you love, mm-hmm. uh, all kinds of shit you love I've, I've seen sessions of. And so it takes a little bit to push that rock up the hill. Yeah. And so, you know, and a lot of times, I would say more times than not, that's a lot more than one session. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you gotta revisit it. You gotta listen to it. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so like I'm working with a rock band in town right now. I'm working with a mariachi punk band. A mariachi punk band. Called Los Carajos. Shout out to them. If you look that up on Google, that's called the Fucks, and they're a hard. Ah, uh, Reba. They play. Uh, they play. Uh, traditional mariachi songs and shit like punked out. <laughs> awesome as fuck. But like I'm playing wow. them by song. Yeah. Because. They like whatever they're gonna pay this. They're paying for this. They're paying for studio. I gotta check place, them out. Did they have like the whole look going on and everything? I haven't seen them in a look. I haven't seen them uh, play live. Oh, okay. I've just seen them in rehearsal and stuff. Okay. Are and, they uh, good though? Is it good? It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, no, it's it's awesome. Mariachi and punk. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> There's eight of them. Um, oh, but yeah, so something like that. I'm gonna charge them by song because I know that it's not. Like a cut and run thing, yeah. Um, and it's gonna take some time, so I I know that like it's gonna maybe X amount of hours, and they're probably not gonna be able to afford it if you really break it on down to hours. Right. Whereas like our app artists are coming in knocking out like three songs in four hours, mm-hmm. and they sound great, and they're ready to release them, and they don't want to pay to get them to sound better. Yeah. And I get, I, I, I can kind of understand that. Why, people why, why, why? people like they just don't understand like. So they, they might not care kind of thing, yeah. about elevating it to a higher level, mm. um, but you know, or down or down the road, like you could, you know, you will yeah. when you hear a song in the club against a Drake record. Yeah, you're gonna feel bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's definitely like levels, yeah. mix or whatever. Yeah, um, maybe when you hear an album that's rough mixes, like. Um, I don't know. Not the Machiavelli album. Yeah. The Tupac Machiavelli album is just rough mixes. There's a lot of mixes. Oh, so yeah. it's like, okay, well, put your album up against the sonic quality of that then. Mm-hmm. If you want to, uh, but that better be your benchmark, not mm-hmm. like, you know, yeah. a Yo Gotti album. It's kind of frustrates you. Um, a little like, bit. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. Do you communicate that with them? Yeah. Like, yeah, don't we be argue about all that all the time, you know. <laughs> They just don't have the same, same level of interest, huh? Yeah, and they think it sounds great. <laughs> it's like uh, ignorance, uh, is, ignorance is bliss kind of thing, yeah? Yeah, and, um, and whatever. Maybe rough mixes are awesome to them, or, or my rough mixes might be awesome to them, and maybe every now and then I do just, like, hit a hole in one, right? Yeah. But, you know, yeah. I'm going to wake up in the morning and want to do some stuff to it for sure. Yeah. It's a never-ending process, I feel like, though. you got to know when to cut it off, too. Yeah, certainly. And, and yeah, it, it is like, you know, Pixar, they just, they have release dates and they just work on that shit. Because you can, you can keep, you can keep working, you know, every day you can wake up or every week or every month or whatever, new plugins come out, new software, new gear. Mm-hmm. You could just every month open a song and update it. Mm-hmm. And just do that like fucking forever. Yeah. Um, if you replace songs, like if you if you release a release a song on on platforms, you can replace that. Isn't that a thing then? Yeah. With a different mix. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. It has to be the same length. Mm. 
Um, or at least on Apple Music, that's like one of the requirements. It has to be the same like length. It can't be like longer or whatever, but right, 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 you right. can replace those. Um, we replaced one recently, a record recently with District. It was a nightmare, though. Mm. Like, she got hung up the title, and so it was like offline for a long, long time. Mm. So it was not ideal. How do you say something like that? Just wait. Just wait. You can't. Just, did you people on you know? Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Uh, Send a million. With who? Angry with, a, with an artist or with a. With like a. To the distributors or whatever's going on. Mm. If, if something gets hung up with, you know, when you're releasing a record, it's it's something going on with the distributors or the companies like Tidal, whatever, yeah. if you're sending that shit out and it's going to Masters and it's going to, you know, all these digital platforms, usually it gets hung up like on one of them. Right, right, right. Something stupid like that. Um, so you've accomplished a lot of music, bro. Do you have, like, goals that you haven't done or artists that you want to work with that you haven't? Yeah. Um, there's all kinds of artists that I love. I'm not sure um, if I would, like, seek them out. I've been thinking recently that there's some artists that I would love to seek out, some, like, older guys maybe, like a Jackson Brown mm-hmm. or something, like an old singer-songwriter or someone like him would be really cool mm-hmm. um, to go track down and just, like, hang out with and see if I could uh, yeah. work with them a little bit. Um, um but you know, I'm I'm just kind of uh, open to see what's happening. Like I said, I, I really like the the artists I'm working with now, and, yeah. I, and I'm gonna keep pushing those guys and everything. Um, but yeah, new stuff keeps I keep getting calls all, all the time for new stuff, big stuff, yeah. smaller stuff, and um, so I'm not really, you know, I don't really put artists on different levels like that. You know what I mean? I, of course, like getting signed by a label is a big thing that like artists are always talking about, and yeah. certainly, you know, you're going to see it happen with Mozzie now, right? So Mozzie's been on really kind of an independent thing with Empire forever. Yeah. Um, and even though like he he's got a timeless record that's on the Black Panther mm-hmm. um, movie and everything like that, now that he's signed like a real major label deal, you're going to see him, like, everywhere. Mm. And you're going to see, really, his fan base go up, like, you know, millions. Yeah. Promise you. Really? Promise mm. you. YG. Taking the next step, like, on the YG level, almost. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. Yeah, well, Mozzie's one of those artists that just has that that it factor, that, that voice. Right. His voice is totally incredible. And, uh... Yeah, when he was popping off, it was like everyone was coming into the studio like, oh, Mozzie, Mozzie, Mozzie. And so it was like, I, I didn't even need to. Oh, you heard of Mozzie before. Everyone just told me about him. And then, yeah, and then he came in. And yeah, he's like, I think he lives out here. Does he live out here now? I don't know. Mm-hmm. But he comes, he comes out here, though, a lot. You work with him, huh? I've worked with him. Uh, I did the Yada Project with him. I did a few other features and some other stuff with him, too. I've got record with him probably two or three times. Yeah. How easy to work with. He's great. Yeah. Yeah, he's terrific. He, uh, um, yeah, he's he's really serious, mm. and he really sits down and works on that shit. Yeah. Like, he's he's not, uh, he is not half-assing or anything. Yeah. If you can, if you can, if you're in the car right now, you're driving, you got about 30-minute drive, who are you putting on to listen to? Um, it's a Sunday morning. It's a Sunday morning. Uh, I don't know. Dylan? Bob Dylan? Oh, really? Um, okay. Yeah, I listen to Tom Bob Dylan. Um, <laughs> I said Sunday morning might be a different sort of thing. It might be a slow sort of All thing. All right, Friday night, and you're headed to Spearman Rhino. Friday night, I'm going to Spearman Rhino. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess we got, we're going to have to have like some sort of like, yeah, like the rap playlist, like the new rap <laughs> playlist or something. Yeah, well, I know you said you love, the, you love gangster rap because we're talking about uh, Lil Nas X, we're talking about Travis Scott, but you said you're really into the gangster rap. Yeah, I'm into gangster shit. rap, but I, but I am kind of like bourgeois about stuff, like, you know what I mean? I like, um, I'm a huge Pusha T fan. Mm. What um, do you think about Griselda right now? Oh, that stuff's great. Yeah. Yeah. Benny the Butcher, I didn't even know who he was. And then we saw him in a day in Vegas, and I was like, oh, this is who this is. I mm-hmm. thought, I was confused. I had them all mixed up over there. Oh, okay, okay. Um, um, but, yeah, I think that whole movement's really cool. I like that stuff. Chief's really into that stuff, too, so he's been, he's been showing me that stuff. Oh, Chief? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah shout out Chief. Hey, happy birthday, Wave, man. Oh, yeah, happy yeah. birthday. Yeah. The whole has Wave, Jimmy, Chief, it all has, like, within was my guy, yeah. a week and a half uh, there. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. John. I've been trying, um, I'm just going to say it over the air, too. Right. Uh, I've been trying to get those guys to, to put together a project with me. Yeah, why would so, they? So, um... I mean, you know, is there, are they showing resistance or what? Well, there's there's four of them, so it's difficult to get yeah. four rappers together yeah. at one time or whatever. But uh, yeah. you know, I'm trying to get them together. Um, they make really cool music. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they're yeah. unique and, and they they have their own identity and they take pride yeah. in it. You know. Yeah, and I feel like if I got them really rolling too, like if I got that sword really sharp, they'd be on fire. Yeah, yeah, they're fun to watch, bro. Yeah, um, but yeah. They're, Chief been turning me on to that sort of stuff. A lot of my own guys that show me new music and stuff they're into. Mm-hmm. Well, um, well, yeah, because my niece is 13, and I ask her what she's listening to. And she always says, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I wonder. But what do you think is like, you know, like the 18 year olds? Like all that hot shit, uh, pop, baby, baby and all that. Oh, yeah. And okay. all the, and then, you know, uh, NBA Young Boy is probably like most hot artists on the internet right now. Yeah. Or like the un Isn't it crazy? streaming crowd. Mm-hmm. I call them like, you know, the free streaming crowd and mm-hmm. that sort of thing. It's like kind of NBA Young Boy fans. Um, Isn't it crazy what he's been able to accomplish? Um, oh, yeah. On YouTube? Yeah. No, he's a tour of cars and, and they've been going crazy with him for a minute. Yeah. Um, is he signed? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. He was just yeah. complaining about it, though. Mm. I didn't know you were signed. Yeah, he was just compiling because they did something with his album. He was on Hot Wheels there mm-hmm. or something. But uh, he used that for Project with Baby, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, the you know all those guys probably are putting out a ton of output. Yeah. Like if you if you could just get studio time and me all day every day, mm-hmm. like you're probably pumping out just like crazy amounts of songs. Yeah. And so when you when you stash all these hundreds of songs, and the label still won't put you it out because they don't have the particular eight that they like, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's a real difficult time. Yeah. Isn't that the, the formula these days? Quality, quantity over quality, more so, you say? Yeah. That's what I tell artists. I say, yo, let that shit fly. I know so many talented artists that just keep music stashed away. And, you yeah, know, no, I, just... I, I, yo, I think that you should work as hard as you can on the music and that it should be quality over quantity, but... Um, but the way that we kind of rock, or the way that I, I rock with a lot of my guys, is that if like, we're working on a song and it's not hot, I'm not going to sit here and beat my head into the ground for three hours <laughs> trying to make it better. Like, so yeah. Let's just move on until mm-hmm. there's something that's like, the demo's hot, or like mm-hmm. your iPhone recording is hot. Yeah. Like, let's do that one. Yeah. Um, and that's really like where I, you know, where I was when I was young as a songwriter and where I see a lot of the guys... It's like, yeah, after we do 30 songs, mm-hmm. your favorite five are going to be much different than yeah. the first five. Yeah. Um, and there's going to be a lot of stuff that you just gonna, are going to think is hot that day, but you yeah. know, it's just not going to stand up to the test of time. And that's how you can really, you know, it's hard to make an album, like an album. Mm-hmm. It's a deep, it's a deep dive. Yeah. Um, you do, said, you, would you like to do that correctly? Steer artists and more so just start out with singles? I just want artists to drop. Oh, like, okay. yeah, <laughs> you know, it's really yeah, a consistency yeah. thing. I want to say it's albums or it's singles or whatever because, um, you know, my artists, they, like, they'll get a thing going. They'll get an aesthetic or a concept or whatever going. Mm-hmm. And so they're trying to put it together. I have two artists right now that we're, like, looking for one more song mm-hmm. for each of their projects and mm-hmm. then shit's done. Mm-hmm. So, like, until that arrives, we're just rocking. Right. Um, but... But in that meantime, yeah, they'll probably have a few singles that they need to drop that don't don't match up yeah. with the album. Yeah, that they'll just release or like you know. Um, the consistency. Who did I just see the other day? I like socks, with socks. Mm-hmm. He's one been one of my rappers for a long time. He just shot a video and he's got a new single. He just put out a project last year or whatever, mm-hmm. but he needs to keep dropping because he came up before. Right. right. So it's like it's one of those. He's one of those. He's one of those interesting guys. He's so talented, and he, yeah, yeah. he just, you know, he, 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 he works on his projects a lot. Yeah. Like, I would say there's a minimum of, a, a session's going to be open a minimum of 20 different times yeah. before he gets a song done. But, like, you know, it's great. Mm-hmm. When it comes out, it's exactly how he wants it. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have any regrets, probably, with just about any of his music because he's really, like, 
taking the time to 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 make it how he wants it. Yeah, yeah. What kind of advice do you give someone like that? Cause he he has like a lot of. Uh, he's not really out there like that. You know, like how yeah. do you tell him to? But but yeah, it's like and so that's what it is. It's like the internet mm-hmm. consistency. Yeah. Keep rocking. Like yeah. you don't have to go outside. Right. There's like you know there's some of these guys there you know they're. <laughs> the, the only rappers that, that have problems with people out here are like guys that don't ever come outside. They're just on the internet. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, they have, so no one ever sees them and yeah. they don't ever get beat up because they're never outside. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, just what it is. So you can have a whole career just doing that. Yeah. Um, but it's, yeah. And the young boy only shoots videos from his house. Yeah, I mean, he can't. He can't, can't go in the camera. And I was like, well, we're going to shoot in that room or that room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> backyard today. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's got to be. So, yeah, the internet is a tool for sure. Yeah, and it's free. You, you know, you, you can you can drop shit these days. So it's like, and, you know, if you're making good music or if you're making cool music and it's coming out once every whatever, mm-hmm. couple months or, you know, watch how you do it with the seasons. Mm-hmm. Right, you right. know, do it like the fashion companies do. Do seasons of stuff. Do right, the right. fall joint. Do the right. do a couple releases in a season or whatever. Do something right. like that so that we just have something to continue on. Because these days yeah. it's like, you know, even if you're not whatever, people are always telling me like, oh, you're not posting enough. You got to get on there and post, or else people are gonna forget whatever, about you. forget yeah. about you and all that. Um, whatever. And I don't really subscribe to any of that sort of shit, but. Um, you don't? I think I think there's But certainly like right, yeah. yeah, like every time I post I get booked immediately. Yeah. So it's like you know, people oh yeah. You know. And, and so if if that is the case and that's how people are operating, then you might as well, you know, feed that if you're an artist or at least like play the game. Yeah. You gotta play the game. See so I I made this distinction um in my head a couple of years ago, because I used to, I really come from managing, managing artists, and you know, I'm booking them, doing all this extra stuff, and there's a difference, there's a, there's artists that are good at doing music, and then there's artists that are good at doing the music business, and being involved in the music business, yeah, yeah. and it's like, um, you know, you have to approach, really approach, um, a lot of artists think they're entitled to the business just because they do music, you know what I mean, they're entitled to those opportunities just because they make good music, or, you know, it's like you have to take on, unfortunately, you have to take on the approach that your music is a product. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's something that's exploited. Exactly. That's, what, that's how it's described exactly. by the labels and everything. Is we are going to exploit your product. Mm-hmm. And we've always had that as well. That's, that's a wrong word. What is, what is that? You know, yeah. but no, that's exactly what's happening. Is you, you're coming from this side of things where you want shit to be pure and real and you're doing this for this sort of thing. But then they gotta like make some money off this. Yeah. So it's a very weird thing, and, and you know, and that's where, as engineers, a lot of times you get stuck in this real weird position, where the labels will be privately talking to you, or the financier, whoever's paying for it, whatever, and they're like, "Yo, we gotta have this out of them." Mm. Like that one thing, like we're not gonna tell them, you gotta tell them, but like you know, we don't fucking like that, mm. and so it has to it has to go. Yeah. And then the artist, and then you talk to the artist, and you're like, what's up with that, like, what if, like, you know what I mean, like, uh, what if we just, you know, did this, or did this, um, and changed this, and they're like, nah, I'm never changing that, ever. Yeah. And you're like, okay, well, how are we going to, how are we going to make those people happy here? Exactly. Um, yeah, there's a balance that is really, it's like the two opposite minded people, the creative people, and then the business sides of people, and it's tough to walk that line. And, and... The good people on both sides of those, they're, they're right. Yeah. You know, like sometimes um, we had a situation last year where I worked on an album and the label was like, oh, this song? Like, what? Like, no, go back to the New Year's Eve mix. Mm-hmm. That was the one. Mm-hmm. And we're like, damn, that was like six months ago we got all this work to it. Yeah. We went back to the New Year's Eve mix. They're right. It was better. Mm-hmm. We just pulled it up and played it. We're like, oh, shit. Yeah. This, this is the one. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes, like, you know, you get too deep in. So you don't share yeah. in, the, in the deep end or whatever, and so it's yeah. good to be able to zoom out. Yeah. I feel like we can sit here and talk about music all day. What does Pat like to do outside of music? Um, man, it's kind of all I've been doing for years now. Yeah. Sorry, Are you in the studio my, every day? All my, yeah. And how many hours a day do you think? Oh, 16. 
Really? Yeah. That's all you do? Yeah. Do you, do you, uh, do you have a do you have a do you have a girlfriend? No, no. Not anymore. I lost her. Mm. Yeah, but like yeah, like a lot of relationships I've lost because of how this is. Yeah. It's full time job. It's a real lifestyle sort of thing. Yeah. I didn't understand that when I was younger and like engineers were telling me like, yo, this is like not what you might think it is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yeah, yeah, and so it's like it's a it's a lot of you know, but you know, these days too our job has become sort of this like really terrible thing yeah. for a lot of the young guys they get treated horribly mm. and why is that um because they can you know a lot of the a lot of the artists even if they're not that big they kind of know that the engineers are really excited to work with them and really want to be a part of it want to make some music with some really great people mm -hmm. and and they'll use that mm -hmm. to their advantage yeah. you know they'll kind of treat people really bad or whatever mm -hmm. just you know yeah and and I've seen that a whole lot, but I've always tried to just get guys away from that. If guys are, you know, if my guys are being treated like that somewhere else, I've always tried to step in and help out. Yeah. Um, and everything like that. There's, you know, wow, you know, it's like, it's tough. Or like, yeah, I've, heard, yeah. I've heard crazy stories about the 90s, though. You know, like R. Kelly would make you sign a contract and you kind of look him in the eyes. <laughs> so like this, you hey, know, is he out? Um, I saw a clip today that he's out. I don't know. He's out? Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> but like, yeah, I don't know. He makes awesome music. He always has to me. Yeah. But, uh, he's like when all this stuff came yeah. out. I was like, whoa. It's, he's like the one person that I learned how to separate the artist from the person. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I can still listen to his records. Yeah. Um, I always really loved his records though too. Right. Um, but it's not like we'll probably ever see anymore. No. I mean, I don't know, maybe if something weird's going on, but from what I saw, it was like, oh, so cool. probably we shouldn't get anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, DJs don't even play it anymore. Yeah, it's, it's, bad, it's still a weird vibe for yeah. sure. Like, you know, and that's that, that's that kind of weird Netflix vibe, like, right? It's whatever Netflix drops yeah. um, is high. And there's, like, um, there's a big controversial one coming out on HBO mm. that's with the uh, with uh, Evan Rachel Wood and talking about Marilyn Manson. Uh. And Marilyn Manson just dropped like he just sued her and says that and posted all this stuff that he's got proof that she did all this stuff and uh. it sounds like a nasty situation over there. I don't even know, but um, everybody's been talking about this documentary. It's gonna drop yeah. real controversial and everything. So. Did you watch Genius? No. Oh, you the, the kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't got a chance to yet. Yeah. I downloaded it, so I could have, I haven't, I, I cried. crashed it. I cried. Everyone said, uh, or a lot of people told me that, like, you know, that uh, that first one is, like, really cool, because that's where, like, you can connect with them, because that, that's where, like, a lot of artists are, mm. or, like, can see themselves. That's a little bit easier platform to get, than, yeah. than get into, like, the... Balenciaga mm -hmm. art installation inside a <laughs> football stadium. Like, right, that's, right. like, so fucking cool. Yeah. Uh, most people can't even see themselves doing that. But, so, like, and then a lot of people told me then the second one's, like, really crazy, too, because yeah. it's starting to, like, see that transition yeah. from when uh, he does get some... Uh, yeah, the, uh, the biggest thing that I learned from that is just how hard he really had to fight for what he wanted. You know, and the, big, and the biggest contrast to what I see a lot, of, what I see a lot today, especially with up and coming artists, is the entitlement that people have today, rather than like him scratching and clawing right. to, to be in the position he was trying to be in. Yeah, he came in. There was no auto tune then. Yeah, or like it was just about happening, right? But he produced like super a lot of records before any of that. Mm -hmm. And the old style of tape recording and everything. So he was around, um, yeah, he's like 10 years older than me. So he was, I recorded shit on tape. So he was really recording shit to tape. And that was like a really tough process. Mm -hmm. Like if you just had to make music back then, um, making hip hop music and shit for real was tough back then. Like you had to go get those drum machines. Right? Right. His fuckers were not cheap. Mm -hmm. um, and then those sounds, there was no internet. So those sounds were like, on floppy disks, yeah, getting passed around hand to hand, uh, just just how you found all those sounds and everything was like way less accessible. Yeah, people were trying to steal that shit from everybody. And, yeah, um, 
I think that was even one of Phil Collins' drums, you know, in uh, the, the Journey, um, uh, not the Journey, but the, uh, the Phil Collins, like the classic drum fill, mm-hmm. you know, like Mike Tyson does in the, um, in the fucking uh, Hangover or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, those drums are like, everyone was trying to steal them in the mm-hmm. 80s. Mm-hmm. Like physically, like go to the studio and steal them off the. <laughs> off yeah, the I, I feel like that's why there was a lot of that music made back then was just so like magical and timeless because it was so much less accessible, and all that those instruments, those environments were just held to much higher respect than they are now because yeah. ever you know you had to be in a proper studio to make anything that sounded legitimate. Right, right. Um, there was nobody that had. <laughs> all that gear in the house. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was certainly just like kind of a different thing. And But there was still, you know, there's still cool people making, you know, it's just the fidelity kind of change. Now, now instead of like tape, four track tape decks, we've got the computers, yeah. we've got a million tracks, they sound a lot better. Yeah. And so it's like the quality of everything has come up a lot. You, you could say like, you know, just about a, a lot of records you hear, you don't have a problem with mm-hmm. how they sound like that. Yeah. But there's a lot less of that, I'd say. Yeah. Um, you can get a record sound in whatever, C+. Pretty easy. Pretty easy. Pretty yeah. easy, yeah, yeah. You smoke weed, right? Well, yeah. of course you smoke weed. Yeah. How much weed do you smoke? Uh, I don't know. Every day, uh, day? Uh, sure. Yeah. Well, what's your what uh, indica or what indica? Or you just smoke whatever. Yeah, I smoke what's good. You said uh, you smoke wax. I smoke though, wax. Right? I, I wax mostly right smoke just rosin. I do dab, dab so rosin. How do you do that and operate, bro? Um, it's really like smooth and I envy you because the iron rosin not. it's more expensive, but it's all it's organic. It's just nugs that are pressed, mm. and so it's like uh and. Yeah, I just, I run a lot. I've always been a runner and stuff, so I get up and run a few miles every day, and there's a big difference when you smoke flour and there's, like, an ashiness, like, in your lungs in the morning when I'm running, like, I can... You feel that? You feel the difference? Yeah, I'll be hacking up weird stuff, <laughs> but especially if I, if I had a, a backwood or something, I oh, yeah, yeah. have weird stuff in the morning. <laughs> but with the, with, the, uh, with the wax, it's like, it's, you know... It's not much at all. Jesus. And it's a huge difference. Like, if you just, you know, you could do an easy science experiment, just, like, smoke out of one, you know, a rig for a week, yeah. smoke out of a bong for a week. Yeah. It's like that combustion or whatever, that fire and all mm-hmm. that. It's like, it's just, like, black mm-hmm. and looks crazy. And, you know, the rig will just have, like, this pure, a little bit pure of juice in it or something. I feel like I was going to die when I, when I smoke wax. Yeah, you just you got to take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I was going to die, bro. Does that help you record? Do you lock in better when you're... Uh... Uh, it helps out with creativity, so it's like a different side of things. Mm. So we'll, in the studio, we'll use it to to switch things on and off. Mm. Um, a lot of my guys will, will come in and work, you know, they'll work sober for a while and yeah. then smoke or work, they'll come in just kind of light and, and, you know, work until... Right. You know, it wears right. off or whatever, so right. they can just have both sides of the coin. Oh, 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 oh. oh the room's getting full. What's up, guys? What's oh, up, guys? Man, okay. Yeah, we got a whole speaking thing. Of, speaking of weed, we got some weed. Okay, yeah, speaking. Yeah, what up, what up? Um, I think we should wrap it up then, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. This was That's dope, bro. This was dope. I really appreciate you pulling up, man, because you are highly respected and highly revered, and I've been watching you for a for long sure. time. Yeah, and, uh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you've helped. You're like instrumental in the growth of not just these artists that you work with but that like has like a, a ripple effect to the entire city so we greatly appreciate you yeah man I, mean, like, I appreciate you just like you know reaching across the fence and everything there is you know even though it's not crazy clicky out here but there is some kind of like there's been some kind of circles and mm-hmm. i know with the the quarantine and stuff it's been cool i know like a lot of my bands like kind of some stuff fizzled and stuff but now like there's just been some cool new friendships and people popping up so Sure. Yeah, like uh, I'd love to just like help out anywhere I can. And, Likewise, bro. Uh, shout out to like all those artists over there that I don't even record. Like, um, you know, Jeremiah's artist and, and Dawson's artist. Uh, I don't even know all of them by name. I know what y'all look like mostly and sound like. <laughs> uh, but um, super awesome, and um, yeah. you guys are all cool for sure. Yeah, man. Uh, however, I can help on on like the, the show side too. I know you get involved doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's all kinds oh, of yeah, dope bro. artists, so it's like that's what I mean, like. 
Dudes want to do shows, like, let's yeah. figure out how to get them in. Like, well, we have the biggest show promoter right here. That, that's even if, uh, yeah, he's doing a little oh, bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, even if, like, no, there's, like, it, how, this is how I feel. Like, if a, if a local artist wants to be on a show, like, cool. Mm-hmm. Like, put your name down, right? Yeah, yeah. And show me some music. All right, if that's just okay, like, you should be given a shot. Yeah, if you yeah. suck and you don't bring anyone out, well, then, cool. I'm going to tell you, like, hey, bro, we gave you a shot, and yeah. you sucked and didn't bring anyone out. <laughs> so now you go to the back of the line, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All these other dudes are going to stay up here or whatever. Yeah. You got to – we're going to take a break for yeah, you yeah. so you can figure out how to – there's some of your friends and family yeah, to show up, your little yeah, brothers and yeah. sisters show up at least. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, you can do that with everybody. You can just be honest with them. Like, yeah. it's really easy to just be like, hey, bro, you don't bring out enough people. Yeah. That's why we're not going to book with you. Yeah, facts. But, like, there's a lot of artists, and you should give people a chance. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and, and we're figuring stuff out with all, you know, if there's probably, there's been problems with Metro. I know they're like, dude, someone got his birthday party shut down this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Which I, I thought was weird because a lot, I know a lot of other hookah lounges that were going on that didn't get shut down at all. I thought that was very strange. Right. I mean, very strange. I've never had a fucking birthday party shut down. There doesn't strange. make any fucking sense to me at all. Man. And no offense, no offense to uh, to Tom, but he's like forty, right? So it's weird that they would shut down his party. <laughs> yeah, but whatever we need yeah. to do, yeah. I know I know several cops, good good dudes or whatever, and um, and whatever we need to do if we if we gotta get them to be in on security or whatever needs to happen, let's just get that to happen so we can keep having shows, keep doing awesome shit like you guys for sure. Thanks, Pat. I appreciate you, man. My door is always open. Rock on. Until next time. Peace. Yeah. Thank you, bro.